<clears throat> okay, let's do number three from the web work. Here's my version of number three, uh, f x two over, and then I did one minus negative forty nine x squared. All right, so just as a general thing, this this stuff and like what we're going to do today, what makes it hard is you really have to know your algebra, your laws of your rules of exponents. You just have, there's nuances to it. You just have to, uh, you got to get it and be able to just have uh, control over the mathematics rather than being constrained to some procedure. If you're looking for some pre procedure in these examples to get right answers, you're not, you're not going to succeed. You got to listen to the way I'm thinking about it and try to adopt kind of a mathematical like control of the situation rather than Here's step one, here's step two, here's step three, here's how to get the right answers. Because they're all just, they have little nuances to them. And so that, that's just, you try to get out of that mindset. It's not going to help you. Okay? So uh, we're going to see that all day today. All right. So, and, and one important thing for that is always rewriting, rewriting summation notation in terms of the terms. That's going to be our key to, to, to making progress on these. When we have summation notation... Write out the terms and analyze the situation through the terms rather than getting caught up in just, just looking at that and saying, I don't know what to do. Okay? And that's why I've emphasized, you know, when you see the when you see the summation notation, what do you think? Right? You think about the terms. So we're gonna be doing a lot of that, writing those out to make sense of what's going on. Okay. So for this one, if we think of this as a over one minus r, then our a is two. And our r is negative 49x squared. <clears throat> so then we know that for some interval of convergence, we can rewrite this as the geometric series. a times r to the n. That will be true for some radius of convergence, some interval of convergence for x, that that function will equal that series. <clears throat> so let's simplify this. So this is 2 times negative 49 to the n, and then x squared to the n, which is x to the 2n. But the form they want this in is cn x to the n. So we, ours is x to the 2n. Herein lies the problem. We can't get ours to look like x to the n. So here's where we're going to write out this, the terms and figure out what's going on here. Because they want something like that over at the left. We've got this, which is x to the 2n. So we're going to write out the terms here. So when n is 0, we get 2. We get 2. When n is 1, we get 2 times negative 49 x squared. When n is 2, we get, I'm going to start again over here, 2 plus 2 times negative 49. Check my math. When n is 2, we get 2 times negative 49 squared x to the fourth. I'll do one more. 2 times negative 49 cubed x to the sixth. Agree with what I did? <clears throat> okay, now let's write out the terms of what, what they want. Okay, so what's this? So that would be when, when uh, c is zero, or when n is zero, it'd be c zero, plus c one x to the first, plus c two x squared, plus c3, x cubed, plus c4, x to the fourth. C2, 
So we have this. They want these coefficients, C0, C1, C2, C3, C4, so that, so that we get what we have, right? So what are the coefficients, the Cs, so that if you applied the values of C to this, this sum, you would get this series, ours, the one that we want to express. So notice, so what would, C, what would C0 be? That's when there's no x, right? It's just a constant term. Well, there it is. Okay? What would C1 be? So C1 is the coefficient for x to the first. We look here. What is our coefficient of x to the first? We don't have an x to the first. You see? We don't have an x to the first in ours. Our next term is x squared. So what does C1 need to be so that we can get this thing? Do you see that C1 needs to be 0? If C1 is 0, then we won't have an x, we won't have a linear term, x to the first. That's what we want. So that needs to be 0. What does C2 need to be? C2 is our coefficient of x squared. Again, what does C2 need to be to recreate this series? Well, it's going to be our coefficient on the x squared term. So what, yeah, so what coefficient of x cubed will get us our x cubed term? We don't have an x cubed term. We don't have an x cubed term. So C3 must be 0. And then C4 is the coefficient of x to the fourth. This one here. So this is the kind of like ingenuity you need. And the key is write out the terms. Write out the terms. So what we have is the first line. And we need to get it in the form of the second line. So what do those coefficients need to be so that if we plugged in all those coefficients, we would get the series that we have. So C0 is 2. C1 is 0. C2 is 2 times negative 49, etc. C3, 0. C4, 2 times negative 49 squared. Okay, anybody have a question? So this is the kind of like ingenuity and, and thinking that we have to have. There's no recipes for these. There's no recipes that work for all of them. So it's, it's, kind of, it's about becoming a mathematician. You, you have the freedom. You, you know the rules. And you, you have the freedom within the rules to do things until you figure it out. That's what being a ma mathematician is. Okay. <clears throat> Questions on this? Doesn't make sense. Okay, so we left off last time with this example. And we said this kind of looks like a over 1 minus r, but not really because it's 1 over something squared. 1 over something squared. So what is, yeah, thanks. What is a function kind of like this that we could, we could do easily, that we could do easily? What's a function kind of like this that is in the form a over 1 minus r? All right, and so I'm just, I'm going to make it as easy as possible. I'm going to do 1 over 1 minus x. So let's let's write out what that is. So can you write out write that out as a power series? Go. What is the sequence that would form a power series that would be equal to that function? Okay, so you should be thinking very simply, 1 times x to the n. So it's just, just x to the n. That's actually the example we did last time. A r to the n. If n starts at 0, right? If n starts at 0, it's a r to the n. So write out the terms. You see that expression? You think what? Write it out.
Couldn't be easier. <laughs> okay, and then we, we talked, we just gave a preview last time of what we want is we want to write a sum for h of x. And h of x is something over 1 minus x squared. So what can we do to f to make it look more like h? What can we do to f to make it look more like h? And we said the hint was use calculus. Use calculus. What can we do to f to make it look more like h? Yeah, if we took the derivative. What is this? This is 1 minus x to the minus 1, right? So let's take the derivative, f prime of x. And so, I'll just do that. So, can we do that in our head? 1 minus x to the minus 1 would be negative 1 minus x to the negative 2. But then by the chain rule, times, right? You have an interior function here with a 1 minus x. So, you have to multiply by the derivative of the interior, which is negative 1. Therefore, the derivative is, so we got a negative, negative makes positive, and we simply get 1 over one over 1 minus x squared. Okay, now, what is that in our sum? So I'm going to start with the terms, and we'll work backwards to the summation notation. So what did we just do? We just took the derivative of f. Well, you've got a polynomial. Those derivatives are easy. So take the derivative of your polynomial. Take the derivative of your polynomial. And that's equal to f prime as well. So derivative is 0 plus 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus, one more, it would be 4x cubed, right? Okay, so now we want to write in summation notation. Right? So we're just, we're doing the derivative of everything, f, f prime, 1 over 1 minus x, 1 over 1 minus x squared. And then we did the, the terms, the derivative. And so now what about the derivative of this? So here's where things get a little, we have to check the terms. We're going to hold off on where n is going to start, okay? We're going to hold off on what n is going to start at, and we're going to do the derivative. What's the derivative of x to the n? nx to the n minus 1. Now we're going to figure out where does n have to start? Where does n have to start so we get these terms? Where does n have to start so that we get this? We need to get exactly this series. We, we can trust this, right? We know that's the right series of f. We trust our derivative of a polynomial. So where does n have to start so that we get those terms? OK, what about n equals 0? If we start at n equals 0, will we get those terms? Yes or no? Sure. If n equals 0, we'll get exactly those terms. Someone said n equals 1. If we start at n equals 1, will we get those terms? Will we get the same sum? What happens when you add 0 to something? Does it change the sum? Does n equals 1 work? Does it give you the same sum? It does. It just starts at the 1 instead of the 0. So in this case, you could have either one. Okay? You could start at n equals 0, or you could start at n equals 1, and you'd have the right series. Because n equals 0, it just gives you 0. That's fine. And then 1, 2x, etc. Et well, n equals 1 would just start with the 1 term, which is the same sum, because you don't have to add, you know, adding 0 doesn't change it. So we'll just... So be aware that starting at n equals 0 or n equals 1 is going to give you the same sum, so they're both okay.
Okay, is f prime of x equal to h? Do we have the series for h? And if not, what adjustment do we need to make to get h? It's an easy one. So we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to write this. Is that the same as f prime? And if not, what do we do to f prime to get that? What am I going to do to f prime to get h? Multiply by 3. So all I have to do is take this whole, this whole new power series, f prime. If I multiply it by 3, I will get 3 over 1 minus x squared. That's h. So that's easy. So what do I do to the sum? I multiply by 3. And what do I do to the terms? I multiply by 3. <coughs> okay, what about interval of convergence? Interval of convergence. So we're going to use the, what? We'll use the ratio test on this. So we'll have 3n plus 1 x over 3n x to the n minus 1. What does all that come down to? When I take the limit, simplify and take the limit, just x, right? Just have one more x. So the limit of 3n plus 1 over 3n is just 1. I have one more x in the numerator than I do in the denominator. It's just x. So my, my interval is negative 1 to 1. I could check 1 and check negative 1. There's three, there's just, it's just three in both. There's not an extra three. You see? Yeah. There's not, there, there's just one three in both. There's just one three in both. Okay, so when x is negative one, we get negative three n. When x is 1, we get 3n. Neither of those converge, right? So I I'm plugged in negative 1, you get just 3n. Or, sorry, negative 3n. You plug in x equals 1, you get 3n. Neither of those converge. There's our interval. So hx, so this, this series we got for hx is valid, or it converges to this function, 3 over 1 minus x squared when x is between negative 1 and 1. <clears throat> okay, questions on this? <clears throat> that was an easy one. Please, yeah. Shouldn't you have x to the n on top? Yeah, sorry. Thanks. Um, so do you agree with this, that the limit is just x? Yeah, but it's not 1 over n. It, this is 3n, so these badly diverge because it's, they're in the numerator, right? Yeah. I disagree that it's x to the n on top because x to the n minus 1 to x to the n on top minus 1. Yeah, but yeah, right. Is it right? Yeah. Yeah, so we're just going to raise the power. Or n plus 1 minus 1 is that? Yeah. Are we good? <clears throat> Thank you for pointing that out. That should have been x to the n in the numerator. Any other questions? All right, let's try a harder one.
All right, so maybe maybe you guys should work on this, but let's let's start on the same page. <coughs> So we want to start with something else, I'll call it P. And let's make it easy as we can. So what, what is some function P that we can find the geometric the power series for easily that can help us get F? Okay, so what, what function, what over what? would be like the easiest thing we could do that would help us get F. Suggestion. Anybody want to give it a shot? Yes. Um, okay, we can, make, we can make it even easier than that. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be okay, but we're going to start easier. So instead of 1 over 2x plus 1, let's put it in the right form. So 1 over 1 minus 2x, negative 2x. Okay, do you see how that's kind of like the easiest possible function that if we took the derivative would get us something close to f? So we'll, get, we'll all start with that. And see how you do. Take five minutes and see how much progress you can make on this. So you're going to write out what? You're going to write out the summation notation and all the terms. And then take it from there.
Hey, before you go too much further on P prime, check, make sure your derivative's right so you don't dig a hole. Is that the derivative you got for P prime? That's what you should have got. <clears throat> Yeah, I would. 
Okay, so this is what I got for P prime. N times negative 2 to the N, X to the N minus 1, after simplifying the derivative in the sequence. Okay, so any questions on that much? And P, just getting P prime, do you follow? Did you get something close at least? Hopefully. Do you have a question? <clears throat> okay, so the question is now, how do we get f? So we've got negative 2. We've got a series for negative 2 over 1 plus 2x squared. We want x over 2x plus 1 squared. So what do we have to do to... What do we have to do to p prime, the derivative of p, to end up with f? So... First of all, we need we got a negative two in the in the numerator. We don't have a negative two. So one thing we're gonna do is divide by negative two. But then we also need what? Divide by x. We're gonna divide by x. What do we need to do to p prime to get f? Need we need a need an x. We need to multiply by x and divide by two. Do you see it? If we want to get f from p, we need to get rid of this negative 2 and replace it with x. That means we need to multiply by x and divide by negative 2.
and then we'll have x over 1 plus 2x squared. That's what f is. So we do it. We do it in all. So we do it on the summation notation, and we do it on the sum. So it's going to be, so we, we're going to, what, multiply this by x and divide by negative 2. So we're going to have n equals 0. n times, well, we're going to divide by negative 2. So then how many negative 2s will we have? So we had n multiplied together, and now we're going to divide by negative 2. So we'll have 1 less. We'll have 1 less minus 2 than we did before when we divide by negative 2, right? You imagine that negative 2 as a bunch of negative 2s multiplied together, n of them. We just divided by negative 2, so we'll have 1 less, n minus 1 now. But we're going to multiply by x, so how many x's will we have multiplied together? So we have n minus 1, we're going to multiply by one more x, now how many x's multiplied together? n. And then, same with all these, we're going to multiply by x over negative 2. So we're going to get 0 plus x minus 4x squared. Check my math. Plus 4 times 3x cubed. Is that right? I'm going to divide by 2. Yep. Check my math. What's that? Twelve, right, sorry, twelve x squared, thank you. Cubed. All right, then minus, divide by two, eight times four, thirty-two, and one more, so minus thirty-two x to the fourth. And then we should, then we should, since we did these kind of independently, you know, we worked on, we worked on the, uh, Um, changing the sequence and then changing the terms independently. Now, to, a good check would be to say, does do you get this series? Do you get those terms when you have the, when you have this series, right? So when n equals zero, we get zero. We're good. When n equals one, we get one times negative two to the zero x to the one. That's x. When x equals 1, sorry, when n, x equals two, n equals 2, you get 2 times negative 2 x squared, negative 4 x squared. So because we worked on the, the summation notation form and the terms form independently, a good thing to do would be to check. Plug in all the values of n in your summation form to make sure you get the terms. And it looks like it works. So here is our power series for f, and then we could find the interval of convergence. That should be an easy one, right? That should be easy. Just use the ratio test and plug in your endpoints. Okay, lots going on here. you got to be on top of lots of different things at once. Anybody have a question? Please ask. If you're not sure, there's probably someone else too. Yeah. Yeah. We're taking the derivative, right? So from this line here to this line here, we're taking the derivative. So we do we do the derivative. So derivative of p is p prime. So now I'm taking the derivative of this. That's the derivative. I'm to and just the power rule. N times negative two to the n minus one times the derivative of the inside. Chain rule. 
So I'm doing the derivative. I'm doing the derivative here. I'm doing the derivative here. I'm doing the derivative here. It's derivative, 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 right? So that's just the chain rule uh, with the power rule on negative 2x to the n. Yeah, it's, it's, you're just doing the derivative. We just did the derivative on all, all aspects of p to the x, or px, p, p of x. Other questions? OK, we need another one. OK, x squared natural log of 1 minus x squared. So let's start with, can we write a function? Let's call it this time. Let's call it, I don't know, doesn't matter, g. What's the easiest a over 1 minus r that might help us get this? What's the easiest a over 1 minus r that might help us get something like this? She's suggesting 1 over 1 minus x squared. We see this 1 minus x squared here, and we say that that's <clears throat> what are we going to do to 1 over 1 minus x squared to get something like what we have? Derivative? No, derivative will give us 1 over 1 minus x squared squared. So is this helping? It is, if you just can think about how we would get natural log of 1 minus x squared out of this. What's that? Yeah, so this is the antiderivative, right? If I do antiderivative of 1 over something, I get the natural log of it. So we want to do antiderivative. Eventually. Something like the antiderivative of g is going to be like j. But let's make the antiderivative easy on ourselves, okay? We got 1 over 1 minus x squared. Is that a straightforward antiderivative? Let's make it easier. How can I make an easier antiderivative out of this? What do I need? Who remembers what we emphasized in the first part of the course? Yeah, so wouldn't it be very helpful if we had what power of x in the top? To the first, because it would be undoing the chain rule. Do you see that? We need, we want to grab one of these x's. And we can, right? Because there's an x there. So we're going to grab one of those x's and do this instead, because now this is a, this is a pretty easy undoing the chain rule, antiderivative which will give us natural log of, essentially natural log of 1 minus x squared. All right, so let's go fast so we can get it done. Here we go. Right? A, R to the N. A, R to the N. Let's write out some terms. And this is essentially what? X to the 2N plus 1 is what that all amounts to, right? X times X to the 2N, X to the 2N plus 1. <coughs> so when N is 0, we get not 0, X. When N is 1, we get? x cubed. When n is 2, so that's a nice easy one to start with. Questions on that much? So what do we want? We want the antiderivative. Antiderivative.
because we know we're going to get natural log of 1 minus x squared. And remember our undoing the chain rule procedure, right? So we take the derivative of that, and we have to see what we need to make it look like g of x, right? So if we take the derivative, we'll get 1 over 1 minus x squared times what? Negative 2x. Well, we don't have negative 2x. We have just positive x. So what other coefficient will we need? Negative half, right? Now the derivative of this new function is exactly x over 1 minus x squared. Remember undoing the chain rule? Okay, so now antiderivative of the terms would be antiderivative now. x squared over 2, right? x to the 4th over 4. x to the 6th over 6. x to the 8 over 8. Hurry, antiderivative. Let's see, antiderivative of x to the 2n plus 1. It's going to be x to the 2n plus 2 over 2n plus 2. Antiderivative. So I, I put down n equals 0. Does n equals 0 give me the right series? You need to check that. Does n equals 0 give me the right series? OK, yeah. So when n equals 0, I get x squared over 2. And when n equals 1, I get x to the 4th over 4. So it looks like it's right. So now what do I have to do to this series to get the one I want? So I've got this series, right? What? I need to multiply by negative 2 and also multiply by x squared. So th this right here, I need to multiply by to get rid of the negative 2, and then I need to multiply by x squared. And when I do that, I'll get j. Do you catch it? And so I'm going to do that to everything. Negative 2x to the 2n plus, how many more x's did I multiply on? 2. So it's going to be negative x to the 2n plus 4 all over 2n plus 2. And then etc. So you can do that. So you're going to, again, you're going to multiply by negative 2x squared. Okay, so any questions on that? <clears throat> okay, in terms of grades, I, po I posted, uh, we posted five new columns in the grade book. Okay, they all end with the date 3.30 because we did it yesterday, so, or Wednesday. So three, they all end in 3.30. Those are your overall averages in those categories. If Blackboard is trying to compute an overall total points for you, ignore that. That's why we posted these five columns. Ignore any, anything that Blackboard is trying to compute an overall grade, total points. Ignore that. Those five columns are correct. And the last one is overall. That's your current standing in the course on a 0 to 100 scale. It's your current standing in the course. All right? 